Coach Sonny and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to mould a boil and bite gum shield. Uh, I know it's something that a lot of people um, get quite worried about um, and find it difficult to get right so I'm just going to go through the steps. So first of all the end goal of the process is that your gum shield, this is my gum shield, uh, will fit in your mouth like that. So when you open your mouth, it's not falling around. If you get to the end of it and the gum shield's falling out of your mouth, then you need to repeat the process until it's, it, it's there. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about gum shields, different types of gum shields at the end, but we're gonna do how to mold a gum shield. So to do the molding the gum shield, you need a kettle, you need a mug, and you need some forks. Now, I didn't have forks, I just got some spoons. So, what we're gonna do, first of all, is fill up the kettle with, boil, with water, switch it on, it's come to the boil, so that's the boiling water in the kettle. And then, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour the water into the mug with the forks or spoons inside it. Okay, at that point, what you're gonna then do is you're gonna take your unmolded gum shield and put it into the boiling water like that. And what you'll find is it will float to the top. So you're gonna get your forks or spoons and just poke it around. And meanwhile, you're gonna time 90 seconds, which is a minute and a half on your phone. So you're gonna do that. Okay, right, now we've got to a minute and a half. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use these forks or spoons to fish out the gum shield, gonna fish it out. Okay, it's gonna be, sometimes like when you've got, like if you use two things, like two forks, it's easy to fish it out, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit soft at this point. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna hold it carefully. Mind you don't burn your fingers on the, the boiling water. And then you're gonna get the gum shield and you're gonna put it into your mouth like this. And then what you're gonna do, uh, uh, push, on the side, bite down gently. Suck in like that. Push inside there. Pressing up around your gums. And then what you're gonna do from there, take the gum shield out, open up the cold tap by the sink, and then run it under the, the cold water. And then you then try it out. See, that's how it will fit. So get to that point. If, you can, if it's staying there, that's fine, that it's, it's over. If you get to this point, you find it's not really, uh, you know, staying in your mouth, take the gum shield out, boil the kettle again, tip away the, the non-boiling water, of course, and then go through the process again until it does mold. A couple of things that can happen can go wrong. A uh, couple of things, sometimes, uh, you know, you end up bending the gum shield, it gets bent out of shape, you put it in for longer. It, it's not really savable. You, you'd have to buy another gum shield, really. Um, another thing, sometimes if you bite too hard, you can actually bite through the gum shield, particularly if it's a cheap one. So just talking about, now I've done the molding, just talking about different sorts of gum shields that you can get. Okay, I'm gonna talk in reverse order. The most expensive. The most expensive gum shields are the best. Uh, they're dentally fitted ones. Um, they're not done in this way, they're done, you, you get, the dentist will get some putty and make a an impression and then send that off to a lab and they'll make the gum shield. The, the pros of that one is it's, it's just the perfect gum shield, it's going to be the perfect fit. Um, the downside is it's really, really expensive, okay, they're good. Though, the next level down is if you go onto the internet, you can, uh, you can actually get dentally fitted ones that companies like Piranha Garden, Funky Gums and so on, they, they're about half the price, you're looking at about 40 pounds. You, they, they can customize them as well with your name or colors or logos and stuff as well for a little bit more. That's the same as a dentally fitted one. You get sent through the post <coughs> some putty which you squeeze together, put that into your mouth, then that putty sort of solidifies and you get a self dress envelope send it back to the dental lab, and then they send you the completed gum shield. So those are really, really good in there. Specific gum shields for combat sports 
like boxing, Muay Thai, and MMA, and so on. So, so those <coughs> are the two most expensive options. The next one down is what most people in the gym would have, which is a gel fit one. So what it, it wouldn't look kind of plastic. It would look plastic, but it would have some kind of gel in it. For instance, there's uh, the Shock Doctor range, which is in Sports Direct, have a number of gum shields at different prices. There's one called the DNA Shock Doctor, which is about 19 or 20 pounds. That is an excellent gum shield, and, and you'll, you know, you won't find much difference really between a dentally fit gum shield and a DNA Shock Doctor, and it's a boil, boil and bite gum shield like that process I've shown you. Then as you go down, like say at the bottom end, you've got some, say you buy like a, a clear plastic one for two pounds. Good side, it's very cheap. If you lose it, it doesn't matter. Downside, to get it to fit in uh, and be comfortable is difficult. Um, not impossible, but it hasn't got this gel in, so it's not gonna mold as well. Um, it might be sort of falling out in your mouth when you're doing your sparring and stuff like that. And so you, it's gonna be quite distracting, I find, for people. So it's actually, my advice is to get a better gum shield. You know, obviously go to a dentist or go online and get one there. Or what most people do is get like the top end, uh, one like uh, any kind of gel fit one um, and, uh, you know, do that. So really important. Another thing is, is don't lose your gum shield. I've lost loads of gum shields, get loads of gum shields left in the gym each week and they're difficult to sort of store. So make sure you have to keep the little box that comes in and after you finish your training, put it back in the box and try and get a training bag. That's the next thing to, to get. Could be a shopping bag if you don't want to spend any money. But like, so you want to have your kit in there, your gloves, when you've got them, your shin pads, and then your gum shield. So when you're training, you've got your kit bag, you've got all your kit there, because it's, you know, a lot of people have a gum shield, then forget it. And, um, you know, it's a very important aspect of training because it's, it's about safety um, as well. Just a couple of things about wearing a gum shield. I find it different. Um, it does take some people quite a while to get used to wearing a gum shield. If it's, uh, you know, uncomfortable to wear, that's another sign, need to remolding. Um, sometimes if your mouth is small, you might need to trim it with a pair of scissors, which I can give you a bit of advice on doing that. Or, you know, as I say, if you do get one of the better gum shields, it will tend to, uh, and it's the right size for you, then it will be fine. Um, it does restrict your breathing as well. So like by 12%. So it makes breathing more difficult. So that's one of the other aspects. It's going to actually improve your fitness more because you're going to be breathing. It's going to be harder to breathe um, in the session. So so that's why you know we tend to advise people do sparring later on in their journey once they've done lots and lots of pads and they've got their fitness up because it's another thing to contend with when you're sparring. You're going to get more tired because you can't breathe as easily. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you've got any questions, you know please do message me, um, you know, write a comment below and I will try and answer any questions you've got. But I hope you enjoy your sparring when you've got your gum shield and, um, you know, it's absolutely brilliant that you've got to that stage. So well done.